Hey guys, so today we have another episode featuring my 2006 Dodge Charger Daytona with the 6.5 liter Stroker Hemi engine under the hood. I'm breaking these videos down into different Daytona episodes that will include things like build specs, the build process from start to finish, the custom exhaust, a review of the car, my experiences, going to the dyno, and that sort of thing. The first episode was just a general showcase of all the aspects, so the visual of the car, some engine shots, some revs, poles, burnouts, and more. So click the link in the top right corner if you missed that video. As for today, we're going to cover the build specs and what's been done to the engine. One of the later episodes will then cover pricing and how much something like this will cost. But overall, using listed prices, so not necessarily the price that you would pay, but listed prices on websites like Summit Racing, for example, the parts are roughly $12,300 US, and the exhaust items were around $3,400 US to give you a close estimate. But again, I'll break things down in another video on that side of things. So let's get into it. This engine was built and assembled by Ned and the team at Rolling Thunders, and all other work on the car was done by Tony at More Power Performance. Overall, it was a great experience learning from both Ned and Tony, and seeing things come together right in front of me. Instead of just packing different parts together, Ned built everything custom to fit and work together as a unit. First, he ports and polishes the cylinder heads and gets the flow data from a flow bench. From there, he has computer programs that simulate the cylinder filling process, and that helps to determine the lift and duration for the camshaft specs. The rest of the build consists of getting high quality parts to reduce the risk of future damage and ensure that they can handle the power both now and in the future should I upgrade further with Boost or a 426 Hemi. So starting off with the parts, the foundation here was my stock 5.7 liter Hemi block from the 2006 Charger. If you weren't aware, I had dropped a valve seat, unfortunately a somewhat common problem on the early third generation Hemis, especially on the cars, so the Magnum, 300, and Charger doesn't seem to happen so much on the trucks and SUVs. I had been driving on the highway for about two hours, got right off, filled up the tank of gas, went to start it, and that was it. The car kind of shook awkwardly and wouldn't start. And upon taking apart the engine, it was confirmed that the passenger side cylinder 6 intake valve had dropped, or fallen out of the head, and subsequently caused damage to the pistons, the cylinder heads, and the block as well. So most of the parts were scrapped and damaged, but in the end, the stock block was able to be used. So this is a pre-Eagle motor with no variable camshaft timing. The engine was going into my Daytona, which originally had the 5.7 liter Hemi V8 with 350 horsepower and 390 pound-feet of torque. The color is Torred, and for 2006 they built just 10,000 Daytonas for the US and 691 for Canada where I live. For the Torred version, there's just 2,000 of them in the US and another 200 for Canada, and I've got number 165. For now, the engine is still paired with the stock Nagwon 5-speed W5A580 transmission with auto stick where you can shift the gears yourself, and there's the stock rear differential with a 2.82 ratio. Both of those will eventually be beefed up or changed. One change that has been made is an upgrade to a 3200 stall speed torque converter. Now let's talk about the displacement. The block did have a bit of damage and scratching on the cylinder walls. It may be tough to pick up on the camera, but it's there. The block was cleaned up and machined, and the engine was bored and stroked. So here's where the displacement comes in. This is a 6.5 liter Hemi, done intentionally because most people will choose to do 6.4s, so the 6.5 is a little bit different, and it might grab your attention a bit more, since it's a number many aren't used to hearing. I'm not going to get too technical, but I'll just cover some basics. First, there are only two ways to increase an engine's displacement. You can bore it, which means to increase the diameter of each cylinder, or you can stroke it, which means to increase the crankshaft stroke. The stroke is the total distance that's traveled by the piston, so an increased stroke in the cylinder makes the piston move further down, while keeping its peak height the same as the factory engine. Using a different crankshaft allows for this, where the connecting rod journals are moved further away from the center of the axis of the rotation of the crankshaft. All stock Hemis have a bore of 3.917 inches, so in this case the bore was increased by 0.02 inches, to 3.937 inches. The stock 5.7 liter Hemi engine block can be safely bored to 0.03 inches oversized during rebuilding, so there is some room for possible upgrades down the road, and this is not pushing the maximum. 
and the stroke was increased as well. The stock crankshaft has a 3.578 inch stroke, while the forged steel stroker crank used here has a 4.050 inch stroke. You can see the comparison on screen between the new and old. Now we can get into a bit of math. So the formula for displacement is bore squared times 0 0.7854 times the stroke times the number of cylinders. So using that formula, the stock 5.7 liter Hemi engine comes in around 344.93 cubic inches of displacement. There's another formula to convert the CID to liters, multiply it by 0 0.01639 and that will get you 5.65 liters. So that's where they get the numbers for the stock Hemi. Doing the math again using the formula will put my engine at a displacement of 394.427 cubic inches, so round it up, that's a 395. And converting that to liters, doing the math gets 6.4646 liters, so again round it up to 6.5 liters. So usually things are rounded up, just like the 6.4 liter Hemi is actually 390.99 cubic inches of displacement, not 392. But of course 391 does not sound as good. Now we can look at the cylinder heads, gone are my originals with square ports and a 2 inch intake valve and a 1.55 inch exhaust valve. In their place were the Eagle cylinder heads from the 2009 and up Hemis. Those were revised for better airflow. So looking at the stock ones, the intake ports were still square, but the intake runner volume was up 14.9% from the other heads. The intake valves used were also bigger up to 2.05 inches instead of 2 inches. The exhaust ports are now D-shaped with 12% more volume, but the same 1.55 inch exhaust valves are used. At 0.5 inches of lift, the intake ports will flow around 13.7% more than the original heads. So again, we use these Eagle cylinder heads, but we have bigger intake valves, 2.08 inches, and bigger exhaust valves at 1.575 inches. My cylinder heads were also ported and polished by Ned, so this refers to reshaping and smoothing the intake and exhaust ports in the cylinder heads, removing flaws and imperfections that restrict airflow, making things more aerodynamic. Some of the best ported heads are done by a skilled person like Ned, who uses handheld tools like an artist to sculpt the port. Then you can test your work on the flow bench to see how much CFM you picked up. But I don't have the exact CFM numbers at this time. Here are some other shots, pictures, and videos of the cylinder heads. And while we're looking at those, we can talk a bit more about porting. So porting helps to make more power in three ways. First, by making the intake ports bigger, it's easier for the engine to draw in fresh air. The more air that is drawn into the engine, the more fuel can be mixed with it and burned, resulting in more power. Removing imperfections in the surface helps to reduce the air turbulence in the intake port, which then allows air to enter the cylinder at faster speeds. And those faster speeds allow the engine to breathe easier and help the fuel to mix with the intake air more completely once inside the cylinders to increase the burn efficiency. The same effect also happens on the exhaust stream as it does on the intake by removing the restriction and increasing the flow capacity of the exhaust ports. The engine will be able to reduce the exhaust back pressure, basically decreasing the amount of work your motor has to put in to getting rid of the spent exhaust gases. So overall, porting helps as there is increased airflow, better aerodynamics inside the ports, and faster air speeds, leading to more power and acceleration. As for some other valve train parts, they're not as exciting for most people, but they are also very important as the valves open and close very fast in these high performance engines, so attention must be paid to the springs and retainers. Manly Nextex valve springs were used here with a lightweight design and high strength to improve fatigue and be able to rev higher. The smaller diameter also allows them to accept smaller retainers, and those are made from titanium, again a lightweight, strong, corrosion resistant material that can withstand some extreme temperatures. These are small pieces, but they do make a difference behind the scenes. Comp cam short travel hydraulic lifters were used with lifter guides, along with an adjustable billet timing set with a double roller. Another key piece is the ATI Super Harmonic Damper. Unlike factory pulleys, which offer no protection to high performance engines, the ATI Super Damper provides balanced dampening of torsional crankshaft vibrations at all RPM. As for the camshaft, a custom grind comps camshaft was used again with lift and duration working seamlessly with the other parts in the engine. It's a pretty radical cam with over 0.63 inches of lift on the intake and over 0.9 inches of lift on the exhaust. 
Comp cams also made the high tech custom push rods as well. Now we can move on to the rotating assembly. Most of the parts used here were all forged rather than cast. I'll post the definitions on screen, but forged internals have better strength structural integrity and resistance to heat, impact, and fatigue due to how they are constructed. The forged internals, and especially pistons, are certainly more durable in terms of shatter resistance when they're exposed to extreme temperatures inside the combustion chambers, especially the abuses that are found in a performance motor. While forged pistons themselves are heavier than cast pistons, and they don't actually increase horsepower on their own, their extra strength allows for a more radical engine, bigger camshaft, higher compression ratio, and more. They can also handle more horsepower. Another perk is that there's generally an improved ring seal, which keeps the pressure inside the cylinder. Thinner piston rings can also reduce cylinder to piston contact. And for a bit of a comparison, the 6.4 Hemis used cast pistons, while the Hellcats used forged pistons, which can better handle the huge increase in power. Anyways, we went with a lot of manly forged internals, like forged flat top pistons, obviously with the 3.937 bore, forged steel H-beam connecting rods, rod bearings and main bearings, and steel top piston ring set. The crankshaft is a Manly Pro Series forged steel stroker crank, again with the 4.05 inch stroke. Now for the intake manifold and throttle body, these parts were taken from a 6.4 liter Hemi, so that means there's a front feed 45 degree side mounted 80 millimeter throttle body and the active runner feature that electronically varies the intake manifold's runner length, short or long, for optimal horsepower and torque. A window switch was also added to control the runners. Both the intake manifold and the throttle body were also ported and custom modified by Ned to achieve the best possible airflow including a 9% increase in airflow for the throttle body from stock. Next is the exhaust. Exhaust is a big deal for me. It's always very exciting to talk about and hear it. So that's going to have a full episode dedicated to it in an upcoming video. There's a whole lot to talk about there. But just to touch on it, the exhaust system is custom built by Rolling Thunders. And then I chose like the mufflers and tips. So there's 3 inch stainless steel piping with Flowmaster 10 series Delta Force race mufflers and 5 inch black chrome Rhino exhaust tips. As for the headers, we chose to go with 1 and 7 8 inch American Racing headers with CATs. For the cold air intake, I chose to go with a Mopar Performance Long Ram intake. This was actually a factory part for the 2006 to 2010 5.7 liter and 6.1 liter motors, so it had to be modified to fit on the 6.4 throttle body. A few upgrades were made to the cooling system as the stock parts had been around for 15 years and were likely going to fail with the increase in power, so most of the hoses were changed out along with the water pump and the stock radiator was replaced with a Severe Duty 2 rad, which is the one found on the 06-10 SRT chargers. So this is another improvement on the stock RT rad. Now we'll just look at some other stuff we haven't covered yet, not really exciting or big name stuff. So that includes Mali cylinder head gaskets, E3 racing spark plugs, a continental idler pulley and tensioner, the Mopar replacement MDS plug, seeing as this is a non-MDS block, a Melling Performance High Volume and High Pressure Oil Pump, Mopar Fuel Hose, 6.4 liter Hemi Fuel Rails, and the stock oil pan is painted in red. I also haven't mentioned the fuel injectors, so these were upgraded to 500cc capacity, up from 320cc stock. The engine obviously requires more fuel, so the larger the diameter, the more fuel an injector can deliver. A 6.4 Hemi Fuel Pump was also used, rated at 235 liters per hour, which is a big improvement on the stock one, that was rated for just 175 liters per hour. 
And here's a few slides just kind of recapping the parts to give you a bit of a visual of everything that we talked about here. The last thing to touch on is the power output in case you haven't watched the first video. Again, this is a naturally aspirated engine, so the best pulls showed 487 horsepower and 512 pound-feet of torque to the wheels. So if I account for a 20% drivetrain loss, that's 609 horsepower and 640 pound-feet of torque. However, the car was tuned, but the dyno used was very old and didn't have load bearing and was also run in third gear instead of fourth gear, which is the one-to-one -one ratio. So when the winter's over, I want to take it to another dyno to get the proper numbers and dyno sheets for you guys and do a whole video on that. So this is all I have for now. So that's the end of this video guys, hopefully you enjoyed this second video on my project and make sure to follow along and stay tuned for so much more content on this 6.5 liter Hemi going forward in every detail and aspect that you can think of. As always, make sure to like and subscribe for lots more Mopar content and I'll see you guys in the next video.